Okay, everybody, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. I am doing my thing, getting this going live on Facebook, if it will allow me to do this. Yes, here we go. We would love to know in the chat where you're coming in from today, who you are, what you're doing, why you're here, whatever you want to share with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our webinar. We'll get started in just a second here. Okay. I think that's going live. We'll see in a second. It says it's going live. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> well, let's get this show on the road. All right, everybody. I'm Alexa Big Wharf, host of the Women in Publishing Summit and founder and CEO of Write, Publish, Sell. This is part of our Women in Publishing Summit sponsor webinar. We are happy to have everybody here, whether you're an attendee of the conference or just someone on our email list, or maybe you just found this through social media. We are very excited to have you here today with Kathy Mice of Bublish. Kathy and I go way back. Kathy is a very talented and gifted editor. She is a mastermind behind all things metadata and book <laughs> positioning. Uh, she has been a true friend and mentor for many, many years. And her company, Bublish, is it's a really cool company because not only do they have all of your self-publishing assist services and a full array of a la carte services and packages to include distribution, but they also have um, a marketing arm of their company, which is really cool that allows you to upload your book and create what are called bubbles that are like little snippets of your book with the book <laughs> cover and other fun stuff that you can share out all over social media. So all kinds of fun stuff happening with Bublish. Um, Kathy, I'm sure we'll tell you you a lot more about the things that she wants you to know about her um, along through her presentation. And I don't want to take up too much time here, but Kathy, thank you again so much for continuing to support the Women in Publishing Summit and our community by bringing us so much of your knowledge and expertise and wonderful, wonderful services. And I'm going to just remind everybody to use the Q&A box for any questions. We'll get to all of those at the end of the webinar. And um, Kathy, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. And I'm a big supporter because what you do is amazing. All the knowledge you transfer and you've been doing this for so long. It's been a pleasure to support you and watch you grow this community. Um, and it's all about sharing what you learn on the journey, right? Because every time you learn it, they keep changing it with, <laughs> you know. They do. Yes, they do. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, let me just dive in. I'm going to share. Can you... Let's start from here. Is it going? I see it, but it's there not it yet. There we go. There we go. Little delay. Do I need to click this OK up here at all? It says leave meeting OK. Bad user design there. No. I would not leave the meeting. Um, <laughs> no, it, it, no it says me. OK right next to leave the meeting. <laughs> all good. I will just leave it. I know. Okay. I think it's saying it's it's being recorded, but just in case. <laughs> And uh, so welcome uh, to my presentation today, uh, the future of independent uh, publishing and really talking about how we're leaning into um, the future uh, of um, all things technology, really, and how we um, are learning as we go. And we want to pass this along to you. I'm going to talk a little bit about technology first and then about um, Bublish and show you some stuff. Um, let me start with an introduction about myself. So I have been a professional editor and ghostwriter for 30 years. I still actively am involved in the editorial at Bublish. And um, I think it um, is a real emphasis, quality editorial at our organization. Um, founded Bublish really to support today's emerging professional class of self-publishers and we are in the process of creating a guided end-to-end -end solution that really does improve the quality of the books that are created through our platform and the outcomes for our authors. It's a very competitive book marketplace out there. So authors need you know, cutting edge tools to really break through the noise. Um, our mission at Bublish is to empower, educate, discover, and elevate talented independent authors and their books. And I am a techno optimist. I believe strongly that artificial intelligence um, can level the playing field for independent authors. 
Um, and we are based in Charleston, South Carolina. So come down and see us, y'all. <laughs> Not far from uh, where Alexa is, an hour and a half away. So today we're gonna to start uh, really with looking at some of the new technologies that are at your fingertips. And then um, talking about what tech can and can't do for you. Um, and I'm a big believer in that. I mean, they say it can ghostwrite a book. I've seen it ghostwrite a book. I am not afraid of losing my job is all I'm gonna say. Um, then we're gonna say, like, think about like how you can assess some of the new technology and platforms, things to think about as you work with companies like Bublish who are putting artificial intelligence to use and other companies and platforms, a, a little bit of a system or process you can apply. Then we're gonna look at Bublish's approach to AI and new technology. And we um, have articulated some principles um, around what we're doing, how we do it and why we do it. Uh, then we're going to demo some of the uh, things that are available to you now and where we're going with artificial intelligence on Bublish. And I want to leave a good amount of time to answer your questions because I do know that this is um, an area of um, where there are a lot of questions, even for me every day. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> so I want to make sure I can answer your questions. So we'll start with a technology overview. Now, there's a lot out there for you guys to tap into, um, but there are three different areas that are really uh, impacting authors and creators' lives very uh, much and, and constantly changing. And I thought we'd lean into those three today. They are all things that we are working with at Bublish, um, so we know them a little better than uh, some of the other technologies are, that are out there. Um, large language models really are the basis of all of this, an area of data science. And what's interesting for me as someone who's really been deep diving into artificial intelligence now for almost nine months, the large language models are guided by language. And as writers, um, it's very interesting to see the power of language to shape the outcomes that you get from these large language models. Prompt engineering is what it's called, is one aspect of that. So if you tell um, you know, ChatGPT to do something, uh, you get one outcome. If you refine that um, verbiage, the, the, the words that you use, and maybe you're more specific, you get a different outcome. So prompt engineering, is one aspect of large language models um, that I've learned a lot about and I find it fascinating. The other thing about large language models that uh, we discovered in our journey creating something of value was that you have to teach them a lot about your domain, about publishing and how we do things specifically. So we built uh, many knowledge bases in order to get the outcomes that would be valuable in our profession and for our author community. So you can't always get the outcomes you want without great prompt engineering and um, great knowledge bases. But some of the top ones uh, that I, I wanna reference uh, simply because what we found was some of the LLMs do certain things better than others. So in the AI positioning report that I'm gonna show you in a little while, um, we often prompt more than one LLM to get a certain field in our report. Now, what's, I think something, if you wanna try any of these things out is to also like think about the company that's running them and what their expertise is. So, you know, Google's Gemini, which we don't work a lot with in our current functionality on Bublish. Um, it is Google. So you can see where they might have expertise in, in search, right? So that makes sense. Um, Meta's Llama is getting a lot of attention now. Meta, of course, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, social media platform. Um, we have not worked with that yet as part of the principles that um, I'm gonna introduce to you, the process to assess these companies. I have a little trouble with how Facebook uh, deals with my uh, user information. So we're very careful um, and we're watching from afar to see how Meta handles uh, user privacy, user data. Um, 
Then there's um, uh, Anthropics Claude, which is embedded into one of the servers that we use with AWS, um, which is owned by Amazon. Um, we found Claude to be very useful for our purposes. It's very good at copyright writing um, and uh, has outshined OpenAI, which is the other one here, ChatGPT, in some of the outputs in the fields that we've incorporated into our positioning study. So go out there and explore is one thing because there's new language models. There's large, now they're, they're coming up with smaller, more focused language models as well. So there's a lot out there. If you're um, trying to do something and you have a really clear use case of what you wanna do, there are a lot of choices. Same thing with text to image generators. So um, we are now in the process of building um, an ideation tool around cover design. Um, we are not going to actually use the images in the design because we believe there are copyright infringement uh, concerns right now. But what we find is when authors try to describe what they want in words, it can be very frustrating and difficult for them. And so a tool that would allow you to create um, the kind of look and feel and you could say, yeah, kind of like this, but I want to change this and this might make our process more efficient, but we'll still be using uh, human designers to actually execute the files to, um, to uh, that will be put into publication. But Dolly is one that we're using um, very closely. We mid journey, we are also experimenting with. And one that you guys might be familiar with, and these tools are just embedded to a, into a platform that we trust a lot is Canva, which we think is a just a fabulous company. They have some AI tools available. So if you're on Canva, I highly recommend that you experiment with those. AI voices and narration are another tool that's really coming to the fore. We have leaned into this so you can now create an um, audio book with AI narration on Bublish. And um, it can, we are part of uh, Amazon's closed beta. So we're able to get that AI narrated book onto Amazon as well, which, which is through Audible, um, which is uh, very hard um, for authors who are creating AI narrated books. Now, I'm gonna speak to this uh, once we get down to the principles, our decision-making process around this, because there was pushback about around, um, you know, not using uh, human narrators, but we still do. And a lot of our authors prefer that. And that's about giving authors choices. But financially, AI audio narration is um, a profound reduction. Um, we can do books for about $600 instead of three to $5,000. So, the thing that people don't realize is um, only 4% of self-published authors have audiobooks uh, because of the financial costs. So we'll go through the process we use to kind of weigh these things. I wanted to show this slide because um, from my mother, almost every day I get an email about how artificial intelligence might destroy the world. Is it possible? Um, from what I've seen, uh, I think it is learning, but I think it has a long way to go. It really needs a lot of guidance to get the kind of quality outputs uh, that we certainly expected at Bublish. But I think the reality is, you know, we I've seen this with writers. So if, if I'm coaching a writer and all of a sudden the writing changes because they're really busy, I'm like, hey, you know, what happened to the tone of your book, like this last chapter? Well, I tried ChatGPT. I can see it a mile away. It's a very generic type of writing. Um, so from a creativity perspective at Bublish, we're really concentrating our tools where creativity and commerce meet to help you learn the business side and help transfer knowledge to our authors um, where craft and commerce meet. Now, does that mean we'll never go into writing tools? No, there's some great platforms out there that can help you with writing and they prompt you and they guide you. It's a creative um, kind of, if you get stuck on an idea, it can prompt you past that, that um, problem and give you, you know, kind of just brainstorming 
concepts. But, you know, the, the concept of having artificial intelligence do anything but copywriting, really getting into the creativity space, it doesn't have five senses. It doesn't, um, it, it absorbs five senses through what's out there on the internet. Like it can see that someone smell, touch, feel, but it doesn't have those. It doesn't have life experience. So we really believe strongly um, that it can be a creative enabler, but it should not be the creative doer, right? You are still in command. And I thought these quotes all had um, some interesting aspect to that. You know, I do believe it will make us stronger as creators um, if used correctly. So here's the big one. Um, first of all, um, the concept of remaining open-minded. I love this uh, quote by Thomas Edison because now that we've been doing this for nine months, we've seen some really wild things. Like we're trying to harness something that is evolving at the speed of light and it doesn't always behave the way that we want it to. And then we have to go back and we have to correct what it's not doing right. So when you're trying any of these tools, including the tools on Bublish, um, be cognizant that this is the beginning of something rather extraordinary. So in the first, you know, time you run something or you try something, it, you might not get the output you want. You might not see exactly what you expected, but be open to the process. Because if you just say, I'm never trying chat GPT again, because I didn't get um, exactly what I wanted. Um, you're closing the door on an incredible opportunity, but we are at the very, very earliest phases of this technology. And uh, we're all learning, you know, even the people who are building the language models um, and this incredible technology that I believe uh, will give us all, um, it is very empowering. So, to me, when you're looking at any of these is you wanna have clear goals, right? You don't wanna waste your time. What is it that you wanna achieve? And then principles, right? So there's a lot of debate. There's a lot of gray area. I do see new um, models evolving where they are um, starting to pay. I think yesterday, OpenAI, ChatGPT uh, struck a deal with Financial Times so they would license their content. Again, a reason to remain open-minded uh, and engaged around copyright issues. What is it that you're willing to do with these technologies um, and how do they align or go against so you're stepping back your principles? Um, do be uh, open to experiment and continuous learning every single day. There is some new development in this area. So um, evolving, evolving, and you've got to evolve with it. Research the companies that you're working with and understand their principles. Again, Meta is a perfect example of that. Uh, you know, in the Facebook days, uh, when it was called Facebook or, you know, look at Twitter, all of these companies are using AI and they have histories. Um, do you trust them? That's a big um, thing to really understand. So understand the principles and the history, watch the news, stay up to date on the news. Um, there's going to be a lot of mergers and acquisitions in this space. So that's going to change things at companies. So anything that you become involved with, I would really try to understand it um, very fully and in an ongoing fashion. So we developed our own um, approach to artificial intelligence and new technologies. Then we have our guiding principles. Um, we wanna be transparent with our author community about what we're doing. We you know, are trying new things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's a brand new era. And if we don't try new things, we can't learn. Um, but we're very transparent about what we're able to do um, and what we're able, not able to do. You know, we can't guarantee results just because we created bells and whistles. Um, we want to make sure that whatever we're doing has a very clear benefit for our authors. Um, you know, there's a lot you could do. Um, and for us, it's about making sure front and center, what's the problem for the authors? Um, I think that the background of us doing this now for almost 10 years and really 
uh, we know the pain points and the frustrations of our authors, and we are trying to use artificial intelligence to address them. Respect for copyright. We're very careful. We don't use anybody's um, work to inform large language models, even our own. We don't keep people's um, manuscripts or books on publish unless we ask permission. Um, we have this front and center, intellectual property and protection of the copyright of that intellectual property is very, very important to us. Um, we want to make sure that the things we're building are reliable, that they're secure, and that we're held accountable um, if there's a, a problem, right? Things do fail. Things don't show up, you know, and we will always make it right. Um, very ethical and fair and human centered. Again, you know, there are, uh, there is the ability sometimes to completely uh, replace a human um, with a new workflow. We always weigh that. Um, mostly we don't see that. We still see a need for a human touch or um, a human you know, finishing of something that's started by AI. I will speak to the example of audiobooks again. And, and people have literally said to us, you know, oh, Bublish is working with AI, I'm out. Um, I think that's unfortunate, but when we weighed the AI audio narration and we saw that only 4% of um, self-published authors had audiobooks because of the expense, um, we decided to offer both. So people can still use human uh, narration, but we wanted to be able to make more audiobooks available. And you as an individual author, you know, you have to make these decisions for yourself, but these are our guiding principles. So now we're gonna jump in, let me just check on the time here, perfect. Um, we're gonna jump into the demo. I'm gonna show you, kind of give you an overview, start with the women in publishing page so you can see, um, how to access that. Then we're gonna look at our new free tools. In the last year, we've made a lot of the tools available, including the book bubbles that Alexa mentioned, free to authors. So there's a lot of free tools you can use. I'm gonna show you our new AI positioning report and we've got a discount for you guys to try it. And then um, AI narrated audiobooks as well. Let me just escape. And can you see this now? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully it's still visible. If somebody wants to stay in the chat, I can see it. Um, yes, perfect, thank you. All right, so this is the Women in Publishing landing page that you can access from the Women in Publishing website. And, um, just so you know, we've got some great discounts for you. This says April 30th. I did not realize that I would be presenting on April 30th. So we will move this to May 30th or May 31st. Um, but you can run an AI positioning report, which is $199 value for just $29. You get to run it three times. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, for one reason, you want, might want to try it in a different genre. Uh, for another reason, you know, you can upload a manuscript or a book. So if it's a manuscript, maybe the manuscript is a little bit more finished. So you'd want to run it more than once. And also because we are improving it all the time. So this way you can take advantage of any updates that we have. Um, you can receive 15% off of your first author services with Publish until um, the end of May. Um, and then I am doing, you know, positioning. Um, bonus uh, hour with 10 authors. And I think we have a few spots left in that. And uh, that's if you you know sign up for a starter publishing package. Um, I'll just give you a quick view of our menu here so that you can kind of see everything that we offer. Um, if I click on services, it'll give you an, a good overview too. So we do have planning tools and uh, planning consultations. As I said, editing is a really strong um, area for us. We have a lot of award-winning books. Um, cover design, um, again, a lot of um, awards in that area. We can handle formatting, layout, ebook uh, conversions. We've got a whole host of uh, marketing 
We're a global distributor to 40,000 channels around the world for every um, format. So you can do hardcover, paperback, eBooks, and audiobook distribution through Bublish. And then the do-it-yourself tech, um, I'm gonna show you a little bit about that in a second. Um, we've got special packages for uh, business authors and for children's books. And here's our AI toolkit we're gonna visit and our AI uh, audiobook studio. So let me just um, start with a, let me, the little okay is there. So I gotta move this down. One second. Hmm. All right. Kathy, I think you froze. Are you still with us? All right, just hang on for a second. I'm sure she'll be back in a second. Sometimes doing a bunch of different things on Zoom makes it go a little crazy. In the meantime, I'll talk about the positioning report. So what it does is it allows you to load your book to... Um, to their system, you can upload and, and very quickly, I think it took three to four minutes, very, very quickly, it will um, pull up a whole summary of your book. I actually just pulled up mine. Um, it's got, uh, you, you're asked some questions about your goals. So it'll have the top three goals in there. It'll suggest some titles. So this is great if you're, if you load your positioning report before you're actually completely finished. Up, oh, Kathy's back. Um, it'll it can help you with some um, with some titles and all those fun things. Um, it's just a great report. Kathy is back, so I'm gonna let her continue uh, where you were as you were about to pull it up. Your whole thing just froze. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what that could have been. It just died on me. So my apologies. So can you see my screen yet? No, I'm not sharing. I gotta reshare. Okay, here we go. Can we see it now? Yep. All right. So um, I'm not sure where I got off, but I, I did get to show you the services. So I think I was just showing, uh, you know, all of her books. Uh, she's got a lot. She's been with us for years, mostly for distribution, but I did get permission to share her dashboard. Um, I'll point out, um, this is the manuscript that she ran through. So the others are books that are in distribution. Um, but before we go into um, the positioning report, I'll just point out, and you can watch this video up here if you'd like and get a tour of the whole um, published dashboard. We just updated um, basically the entire dashboard to be able to show authors basically the steps, like all the steps you've got a planning, then you go to writing and editing, then design and production, distribution, marketing. And if you have books and distribution with Bublish, all the forms you need um, in order to like tell us to change your product page. But um, the studio concept is really our first step in automating and trying to bring down the cost uh, to publish a book so that you can spend the money where it's most needed. Like I said, um, on the editing, um, the real creation side, we don't think AI is taking over that yet. Um, it's still done by humans and it's expensive, but we'd love to see more authors really invest in fabulous editing. It makes so much, uh, such a huge difference in the outcomes for authors. But we understand that, you know, putting together a book is expensive. So we're trying to automate as much as possible and the tools will come in each of the studios. Now, some of the free things that we have available to authors already are um, over here, the ebook creator. So if you needed to um, 
you wanted to get your book out, but you really didn't want to spend a lot of money um, to produce the actual book, you can go with an ebook first and you can use our free ebook creator. So you can create a free uh, profile on Bublish. And um, once you create it, you just click a button and now you have an ebook that you can distribute. Um, it's in the EPUB format and ready to go. So that's a free tool that is available to authors. Um, you just go to the DIY page on our dashboard and you'll find access to start your free account. Um, we also have in the marketing studio, the book bubbles. So, um, and we can do some marketing for you, even if you're not in distribution uh, with Bublish. Some is uh, limited to authors who are distri in distribution with us. But let me just show you the book bubbles. The best way to see them is to go over to um, Twitter. So every week we do the Weekend Reader Marathon and we tease all the bubbles that are, this is uh, from this weekend, this last event. Um, we tease them, we hashtag them. Um, and you can see this is a bubble created um, by one of our authors. This is a free tool. Um, I have a very large screen, so it looks kind of small here, but this author has uh, gone in and selected an excerpt from their book, and then they've added an author insight here. So the story behind the story or some kind of interesting nugget that you share to enrich that excerpt. Uh, excerpting is a great way to get people to try your book. All the buy links are here and we track all of this. How many people viewed your bubble? How many people went to Amazon or Kobo? Um, they can be shared. Um, there's even a link if it's not on Twitter. Say you wanna share one on LinkedIn, uh, you can do that. And then there's a little synopsis, um, a little bio. Uh, if the person has a website, you could go here and visit their website, but it's very author centric. So you can create um, a bubble every week and we'll share it with 600,000 readers as part of our weekend reader marathon and you'll see the metrics right on your dashboard. So we think that's um, something we wanted to make free for authors, um, which we were able to do in the last few months. So a lot of free tools on Bublish. Let's go back to, um, you can run you know, uh, Facebook ads here, uh, you can view our marketing services. We now have a um, an integration with Written Word Media, so you can run a price promotion. And instead of remembering to change the uh, cost, price of your book, if you're in distribution with Bublish, we'll automatically get that information and be able to change it for you, making life a little easier. Um, Let's go in now and look at the um, positioning report. Now there is a page uh, where you can access the AI toolkit and we'll be adding more things there, but the positioning report, you can run it for $29 um, if you have that discount code. And this is the one that um, Margie ran for her manuscript. So she uploaded a full Word document. Now, the first thing um, that she did is she changed her title, which was originally Dobbin and the Girl Who Loved Him. Now, people feel very close to their titles, and she's a very good writer. I don't think that's a name that's going to really sell a lot of books. Our positioning study uh, re gave her a suggestion that she decided to go with, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. But we do capture the top three goals uh, that you have. This is something we think is really important for authors to think about. And the difference between traditional publishing, where you kind of have to go with the goals of the publisher as much as your own personal goals. In self-publishing, you don't have to do that. Your goals are the guiding light. So right now we capture those goals. As we build out our system, those goals will inform some of the things that we suggest to our authors um, as we move towards full automation in the coming year. Suggested titles. So this is what, um, and subtitles. So it does suggest um, titles it, uh, and subtitles. Subtitles are increasingly important as pieces of metadata. Um, and again, all of this is around positioning your book in a competitive marketplace. So things that can help you stand up out. So 
It named it Coal Dust and Dreams, which I think is great. Um, the book is about um, a, a young girl working in the mines of Wales and Margie is really big on into um, horses. So there's a, a mine horse as they were called, but it gave her a lot of ideas. And again, you could take pieces of them, right? Um, to create your title and subtitle. Um, then it does um, suggest categories. So um, it also tells you, the AI tells you why it chose those. So it is a coming of age story. It does talk a lot about gender roles, family. It is historical. It is set um, in the British Isles. So um, these are an attempt to try to get you the most granular of categories that are available on Amazon. So you can be the biggest fish in the smallest pond, big difference. BISAC codes are used really in the wholesale channels like Ingram. Um, and you'll see that those codes are here and will help her um, stand out. You know, it does have a lot of social themes. It is historical. Keywords, we've actually refined this in our latest thing. So if she ran it again, and I'll show you how that works. Um, she um, would get a different output. It's narrower, it's more search oriented. This is more of a keyword cloud. Um, and that was based on feedback that we got from our users. So if any of you have actually gone through the positioning report, you do get to run it three times for one payment. So the same title, you can run it three times and it won't charge you. Now just getting authors to think about their target audience, right? So it gives you some ideas um, about, you know, who might be uh, interested in this. Of course, people interested in Welsh and um, things around his history in Wales are cited there. And then it gives you comparable titles. I will be very transparent. Um, what we found in the very beginning and, and uh, Margie was one of the first ones to run one of these. Um, it's sometimes made up titles out of the blue, totally uh, made them up. So now we run it through an ISBN uh, validator and it puts the ISBN next to it. Um, we've also done some work on trying it to get it to, to give more uh, current titles. Um, and again, this uses multiple uh, large language models to produce this. Now, um, here, uh, this is um, what Margie put in. Our system does not use this for any information. It's just a, a comparative to show you what was input. You could put in test or I don't know, and that would be fine. But if you notice this first sentence here, I don't know if this is fiction or nonfiction. It's not a sentence that wows. Copywriting is really different. But to have a description of the book that begins like this, Ethan's world is turned upside down when a mining accident leaves her father injured in 1930s South Wales. That kind of wows you and it, it starts to indicate um, story, fiction. Also gives you the top selling points for the book. What I loved here is it's talking thematically, like outside of category, themes of resilience and perseverance. People love to know that. So you could use this in a sell sheet. You know, you could use this in descriptions of the book. Um, and it's meant to, to really give you verbiage to describe what's unique about your book um, in this very competitive marketplace into which you have to publish. And so let me just go back to her, um, uh, doo, 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 doo. well, let me just show you how to access this first. So this is the AI toolkit access. So all you have to do is start positioning right here and remember your code, you'll set up um, a free, uh, you know, publish profile when you do that. And then you can access our free tools. Um, this tells you a little bit more about it and also uh, how it works and when the right time is. And then there's an FAQ for that. Um, I do also want to show you, and I want to make sure I'm cognizant of time. So I'm just going to show you one more thing here, which is around the audiobooks. So like I said, we still do um, work with human narrators. So it is a choice. Um, this is to access our audiobook 
uh, AI audio narration tool. Now, here's an example. I'm going to be very transparent with you about something that happened to us. When we started this, we were dealing with a company called SpeechKey, and we built a very expensive API, which is a connection between our system and theirs in order to bring the entire experience onto our platform. Um, in early April, we received an email that on a Monday, that on Friday, that they were uh, shutting down SpeechKey. So after many months of work, um, we were taken back. And this is why you do really want to understand. Now, I'd worked very closely with the founder um, and had built trust, and they have honored everything um, in order to give the authors who did have books go through their system in the closed beta a chance to get that. But we very quickly had to pivot the way that we were doing this. At the same time, we were invited into the closed beta for Audible, Amazon, KDP audiobooks, which is a place everybody wants to be. So the only restriction now is you do have to have an ebook uh, in distribution with Publish in order to participate, but we can distribute you, and this is pretty amazing because uh, they're still not accepting other audiobooks that are AI narrated. We can get you on Audible, Apple Books, audiobooks.com, Baker and Taylor, which is libraries, Barnes and Noble, Biblioteca, also libraries, Google Play, and all the international markets, Kobo, all the international markets, Overdrive, library market, and then Spotify. Um, and they've moved in big time to audiobooks. So um, a streaming platform. So um, how it works now is a little different than how it worked at the beginning of April. It's actually a little easier for the authors. Um, it does um, require you to fill out a form to make edits, but then we have a team making those edits for you. You just select your title, you choose a narrator, um, you review your audio proof, and then you approve and we publish it. So you can have an audiobook for $600 on all those channels. It requires us to create a number of versions of that book for you, um, but it used to be, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So I think now I would love to just answer questions. I've thrown a lot at you. Does anybody have questions? We see, I see one in the Q&A box. So, okay. So Stephanie so asks, yeah, when and how is material copyrighted? Is an attorney needed? Thank you. Uh, well, books are, if she's just talking about books or is it more of a an AI copyright? I think she's, I'm not sure. It doesn't specify. It sounds like um, can, can you clarify, Stephanie, do you mean in general copywriting your book or do you mean copywriting AI like images, a, yeah, AI generated images or something? You can clarify that for us. We can come back and answer it. You've got lots of questions about um, your services. Book bubbles are indeed free, you said, correct? Yeah. Okay. And where can I find the code? Oh, that's easy. I'll drop that link in there again. It's at, if you go to womeninpublishingsummit.com forward slash publish, I'll drop that in there. Okay. Stephanie replied that she's asking copywriting a book. Yeah. So when you, some copyright protection is afforded when you get an ISBN. So I would make sure you have an ISBN before you send out any advanced reader copies or, you know, review copies to anyone. I think you'd recommend that as well. Um, and there is further protection if you want to go through the Library of Congress. Um, that is a little bit more of a timely process. Like you have to fill out some forms, but that is a secondary layer of protection. Most authors just get protected with ISBNs, but you know, if you really wanted that extra layer, you could go, they're called, uh, LL, uh, LCCs, li Library of Congress. Control number. Yeah. LCCN. Yeah. LCCN. Um, that's it. Exactly. LCCNs. You 
If you Google the electronic copyright office, you can file your copyright there. I think it's eco.gov, but I always go, I always wind up Googling uh, electronic copyright office <laughs> and no lawyer is required for that. It'll yeah. walk through the entire process. It costs $55. It takes about 15 minutes. And I do have a tutorial on that on our YouTube channel if, um, awesome. if you need help, but it's very, very simple. Okay. What does it mean when the audiobook is required to be distributed by publish? Does this affect my ability to be on KU? Uh, if you're on, well, so if you're already in KU and you're already distributing your book, um, you would have to come over to publish. So it's probably, and we are right now working primarily with our own authors, but if you have interest, just fill out that form on the audiobook. There's just a short form, and then we would know to keep in touch with you as we expand out. But if you're in KU, you're in distribution. If you're in KU with us, and you want an audiobook, that audiobook immediately becomes um, in KU, which means you can't distribute outside of Amazon. It's exclusive. Now, those are 90 day increments. And one thing we tell authors always to do is unless you are just committed to uh, Amazon, don't check the button that auto renews your KU. And that's right in your settings. And I think they auto check it for you is what, and so you have to kind of uncheck it. So if it's something, you, you know, you want more distribution down the road, you know, you just uncheck it. And we, you know, ever since COVID, we've done a lot more playing with KU just because everybody was buying everything on Amazon. Amazon just got bigger, but we're very, very enormous advocates of going wide. For a lot of reasons, especially with audiobooks. Interestingly, they, they do not own the space the way that um, they do in ebooks. Hmm. Um, can you explain again how to set up a free account on Bubblish to get the book bubbles? Yeah, so just go to the page that is, let me, well, you can go right through the, the link that um, is being provided by um, Alexa, but let me just get the DIY tech link and I'll put it in there. So you just can create an account here. It's hosts and panelists. So let me just everyone it. There you go. Um, so that you just set up an account and then you can use the ebook creator, you can use the um, book bubbles. And, you know, if you create it, it's automatically in uh, the, uh, the weekend marathon every weekend. Also, wow. they have to be new. So we don't just keep putting the same ones in. But the, if you create one on a regular basis, immediately we'll go into the, uh, the weekend reader marathon. When you're publishing, I believe Elizabeth means when you're publishing people, do you provide the Library of Congress control number for paper books when, when you're distributing or is that something the author has to do? The author takes care of that. We can provide free ISBNs for all formats, which can be a big savings. And one of the things we do differently is if you have your own imprint, we will assign it. You know, people have different sense of if they want to have their own ISBN or not. Um, and we certainly respect that. You can use your own ISBNs, but if you don't want to pay for those and you still want to be very associated with that ISBN, we can put it in, uh, you know, so you're the publisher, whatever your imprint is, which is something a lot of um, self-publishing platforms won't do. It's always them because it's good advertising. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, can you explain a little more what the bubbles are and if they're available for picture books? And then just a clarification on that. Um, you can create as many bubbles as you want. There was a question asked on this. So like every day you could go in and create a new bubble. But if you're going to be using this to the best of the bubblish, you'll definitely want to get them done. What by Friday every week? Thursday by three o'clock because it's okay. three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday that we run the marathon every week. Um, so the only thing is you can create one a day, um, that we can only include one from each book in the, um, marathon and, and up to three books. So if you have multiple books, which a lot of our authors do, and they create a bubble from each one, all three, 
Um, but if they have 12 books and create 12 bubbles, and that's just a matter of um, uh, capacity really, you know, to try to create an event where people actually get seen. But even if you're not promoting them, when someone creates a bubble, they can still promote those. They can share them out. Oh, the yeah, so absolutely. Visibility, even if they're not promoted through through the publish one. But can you talk just a little bit more about what the how, how a bigger picture about the bubbles and um, picture books? I can't remember if I've ever created a bubble for any of our picture books. I think we may have. Yeah. So the th way that they do it, uh, because they are um, responsive design for all different screens. So, you know, picture books have that, you know, uh, image issue. So what people have done is they just take uh, the screenshots or images and put them in the ebook creator um, with the text um, so that it can, it can accept the, the pictures and the text and then it'll be more fluid. And then those go into uh, book bubbles. Um, they're called rough cut book bubbles because you can actually create bubbles from your ebook before you publish it as well. But it is used by a lot of um, uh, uh, authors who create, you know, picture books. Perfect. Where can I find a list? Switching back to the audiobook stuff, where can I find a list of which accents are available for audiobooks? At the moment, I'm looking for Ukrainian, but other European ones like Italian or other variations of American. So we um, right now we're we don't we're not as like granular as that. So we've got like Australian, British. Um, I believe uh, English, um, there's one other, oh, uh, Indian, it was, uh, India was spoken in English. Um, but I think 11 labs is a good one to explore. The big thing with AI audio narration is not just the voice you get and the quality of the output, but where can you actually distribute that? Because there's a lot of, so if you, 11 labs was one of the ones that I mentioned, and we um, have spoken with them uh, about a number of different use cases. And I think they have a very wide selection. I would even AI narration, uh, Ukrainian action, accent and see if something came up, but I would start with one of the bigger players for that, something that, that niche. Um, Additionally, the big thing that I think is coming, um, it's already out there in some ways, is voice cloning. Mm. Um, so if you have a Ukrainian accent yourself and you wanted to read it, that's that's really right around the corner. Um, we were in experimentation with that. So, and I think it's great, especially for like uh, speakers who want to read their own books, but don't really have the time yeah. uh, to go into the studio or the, you know, the money. Um, but right now we're pretty limited on that. Um, and Carolyn, you might want to, um, go back and revisit the webinar that we did with number three productions. I believe it was two, two or three weeks ago. Um, they are doing some crossover between AI and real voices. So ask Mark if that's something that they're doing as well. Um, Okay. Laura says, does, it, does a nonfiction, and I've seen this on the fiction side too, do the books need to be completely finished with, um, uh, what, but particularly with the nonfiction, with the bibliography, appendices, et cetera, for the um, positioning report? No, uh, I, I mean, I would say the, the book has to be whole, like you don't want to put in two chapters, it's not going to give it enough to understand, you want a whole manuscript, but um it uh it's about the it's analyzing the story um you know or the or the content of the book and so as long as it's that and that's why you can run it three times as well so um if you want to come back and try it again um you know after you do revisions you can do that um but as long as it's a sense of a whole that it can analyze um it's a a great starting point i think Patricia wants to know if she can use Bubbles with the pen name and her real name. Uh, yes. So our accounts and the book bubbles are tied to an author's name. So um, we do have discounts for um, 
certain things that we do when people need us in that capacity, but I would just open two accounts that are free, um, one in your pen name and one in your regular name um, to get started. Perfect. I'm going to guess the answer to this question is, is no, but you mentioned being able to put a book through the AI positioning report three times. Could you potentially put three different books through instead? No. Yeah. So it's tied to the actual title. And we, like I said, we gave three, uh, first of all, because we are iterating. So it allows someone to get, you know, the latest, um, uh, you know, enhancements, but then also people who are in manuscript phase can go um, through multiple times as the manuscript evolves and get, to, uh, the other reason was, so like if you have a romance versus a women's fiction and it's kind of one that plays in the middle, you could run it through in different genres and get different, you know, categories, a different way of describing the book and that um, our authors found useful, um, but each title, but it's only $29 now. Um, uh, so you can, you know, run it at, at a very discounted price. Awesome. Okay. Marlis has published her book and she bought two months of marketing with another company, but wants to know what marketing services publish offers. So, like I said, the most robust marketing, um, is, when we have a book in distribution, cause we can really optimize that product page. Um, but we do offer Facebook ads. Um, we do uh, press releases cause we found that a lot of authors couldn't afford publicists. So those basic services, we can write those for you. We can distribute them at different levels. Um, for our distributing authors, we also um, have Amazon ads that we can run. We are doing um, a beta test with a company in Europe, uh, AI generated Google ads. We have about 30 books in that, um, in that beta. Uh, we have the book bubbles. We have the written word media. So, you know, if you wanna go right on from your published dashboard, you can set up um, a promotion with them. If you're in distribution with us, we can automatically make that price change for you and save you some headache. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you're not, it's still a handy thing that's right on your dashboard. And we'll be adding um, more integrations like that in the future because there's some great marketing companies out there that we work with and trust. And I think that's part of what we provide is um, we vet these companies. We work with them for a long time um, and make sure, you know, there's um, the kind of outcomes we hope for before we- And you guys just keep expanding and expanding. I think about to where you were when you started to where you are now, it's pretty incredible. Um, Rainy Thank asks, you. Uh, are AI voices smart enough to add inflection on certain words such as exclamation, blah, 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 or do they all sound flat? Um, I think you have to, so it's interesting. Some are better at that than others. The um, technology is evolving a lot. Um, when I was researching this, there was one company I ran it and it was Gwyneth Paltrow's voice. They'd licensed it and it sounded just like her. <laughs> wow. So I know. So I think, um, again, open-minded that we're on the cusp of really things coming faster and evolving faster is a lot of the basics have been taken care of our voices that we have um, conversational is a, like a little um, word you'll see after some of those, those seem to be best to me at inflection. I will say, you know, business books um, are a really great use case for this fiction. Like we had one author go through when we were working with speech key and by the end of it, and it was Southern, had a real Southern, and she had, she just said it's not enough inflection and she wanted to wait for multi-voice. So uh, we expect to have multi-voice available in the coming months, which means in dialogue, you could say, this is Sarah and this is Joan and this is Sam and choose different voices. Um, so that's coming, that helps. And then when you edit the books that um, you can, edit for inflection to some extent. Um, so there are, you can get it pretty close and some voices are better than others. 
Yeah, I saw opinion. there they are. Um, I just saw the update to the KDP beta where now for people who have dual point of view books, originally it could only be a book, a book in one voice. And now you can actually change who's narrating each chapter. But yep. it'll probably be a little I don't know when that's going to be where you can change voices by by and, and really for me that wasn't very important because if I think about the books that I li have listened to as long as I've been listening to books they're often narrated by one voice so but the inflection and the fear or like I know there was one one part in my in my book for example where she's like quoting a very short snippet of a song right so when you're reading the book and it's a famous enough song you you can hear it in your head it was all by myself by Celine Dion and oh. she's like I'll buy myself. Don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, uh, that doesn't land quite how we wanted it. Um, yeah. Okay. We're almost out of town, out of town, out of time, but I do want to hit these last two questions. Sure. And then Kathy, if you'll drop in the chat um, while I'm asking this, um, where people can, where the best places for people to go if they have questions, is it just that link that we've been dropping? Is there a get on a call or ask questions? That That's page. right at the top. If you Perfect. and it's also on the page. So while you do that, I'll look for the um, I'll look for the women in publishing, which I think I closed here. Um, because there's a couple of people who are asking questions about if they're already um, loaded and being distributed through Amazon exclusively or through Ingram Spark, can they still um, get distribution with you? I do believe you offer. I'm pretty sure we t we transferred a title to you guys. I think off of Ingram to publish. Is yeah, that it's very easy in Ingram. The title transfers. There's the women in publishing with the discounts, um, and I will update that to reflect May since it is April thirtieth. Um, but yeah, and within Ingram, you know, we have a pro level account with them, and they do transfers. Somebody just did one of those yesterday. Um, but uh, with Amazon, yeah, it's a, kind of a takedown. So we try to like. We love to help authors. If you have a series and you're in the middle of it, um, don't move one book in your series um, to publish and keep the rest. And, it, you know, so I'd love to um, info at publish is also just, um, you know, you can reach our team. There's actually on every page of the site, you can just type in a question. And we also have a um, an expanding knowledge base that we've been creating, um, but feel free to get in touch. And on any page, there is just a link to a calendar. Uh, even on the on the uh, Women in Publishing page, there's a link to schedule a call with us. So you'll talk to either me or someone else on the team. Perfect. And just finally, can book bubble can bubbles be effective for books that are three to four years old or just new books? Oh gosh, definitely uh, great for older books. I mean, the the dirty secret that nobody in publishing tells you is most of the money is made by backlist. So mm -hmm. that's where the gold is. Um, so as long as you're finding audiences, um, new audiences and keeping your book relevant, unless it's very dated, like for some reason, no, keep keep promoting, keep promoting. Yeah, that was talked a lot about at, um, I just came back from the Independent Book Publishers Association Publishing University, and they talked a lot, even from the big, um, big houses is, about yeah. the, especially the big houses, the importance of the backlist and, and other titles. So, well, this was such a great webinar, as always, thank Kathy, thank you. you always deliver really well. Um, yeah. So if you want the, the replay will be posted on our YouTube channel, that is youtube.com forward slash write, publish, sell, like write a book, write, W-R-I-T-E, <laughs> publish, sell. And um, you can find that there within the next 24 hours. It's also on our Women in Publishing open Facebook page. You can find it there. And um, just make sure you go head on over to publish, go through the women in publishing summit.com forward slash publish to get their page with the special offers and all the things that they have going on for our audience. Kathy, again, thank you so much for your support of our community. And um, we will, we will see you soon. Any, any final words to wrap this up? 
No, thank you. And if and if you don't go through that page, please tell us you're from Women in Publishing so we can honor some of those discounts. We want to make sure that we do. And um, thank you for all you do, Alexa. And um, a pleasure to be here today. All right. We will see you all soon. Make sure you check out womeninpublishingsummit.com forward slash events to see what we have coming up. We've got a marketing uh, the Marketing Fundamentals on Thursday. That's a free marketing webinar. So I hope I will see you all there and at our upcoming events. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.